Here, send him in. All right, what have you got? Hey, give me a second. I'm barely in the door. I'm man. sorry, I don't have any time for hello, how are you, isn't it a lovely day kind of stuff. I just want to know about Rhodes. Okay, okay. Um, we're keeping a constant watch on him. So far, he hasn't tried to go to the hospital and see Chris. All right, maybe just playing it safe. There, uh, there was someone who called the other day and tried to uh, inquire as to her room number. All right, what happened? Well, we briefed all the staff, so uh, he wasn't even told that she was moved out of intensive care. He? Yeah, it was definitely a male voice. Well, I got a 24-hour guard on the door. I don't see what else I can do right now. Well, you might start out by trying to relax a little. Relax? How the hell am I supposed to relax when he's out there somewhere waiting to attack her again? I got nothing solid on Rhodes. I got nothing solid on Schaefer. That better there's nothing on anybody at Image Inc. Chris woke up, thank God, but she didn't want to talk to us. And uh, Miles still uh, won't let you see her. Something's wrong, Calvin. I just know it. I know something's wrong. I don't care what he says. I don't care what she says. I can't just sit around here and wait. told you? No, I was just know I'm here. I came on my own. Oh, Derek, I can't talk to you right now. What do you mean you can't? You have to. I have to tell you about the investigation. You have to tell me what happened the night you were shot. And, and I have to give you these. They're beautiful. Chris, why don't you want to see me? I do want to see you, Derek. Sit down. Miles said that you were just disoriented from the concussion. No, no, I'm, I'm all right. I can tell you what happened to me the night I was shot. Jody, will you slow down one thing at a time, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, now, look, you're gonna have to decide for yourself whether or not you want a pledge of sorority. I... Yes, matter of fact, I talked to Preacher this morning. Well, he's keeping busy. He's trying not to mope around. No, he's working uh, temporarily on uh, Beth Krell's call-in radio program until her regular engineer gets out of the hospital. Sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Yeah. Kavanaugh, but Dr. Rollins is here to see you. Fine. Jody, Come in, I've got to go. Thank yeah, you. keep in touch, will you? Bye-bye. Hello, my Jean, thank you so much for coming over. Well, I promised you'd be the first to know. All right, Gene, we've known each other for a long time. You don't have to pull any punches with me. Well, it's just that I know Miss Egan is a personal friend of yours, so I'm trying to uh, ease into it. Well, thank you, but an awful lot is riding on this. Her professional career, there's a police investigation. Yes, I understand. So it's very important to all of us to know exactly what kind of shape she's in. Yeah, we're just trying to get her back in the office. Hi, Amy. Hey, where is everybody? Marty, this is busy. I don't understand why Mitzi runs herself ragged trying to keep the rock garden afloat. She's got a life in the theater. Yeah, well, she's got some guy who wants to buy this off. If I were her, I'd jump at it. She's jumping. It's good. This place reminds me of the Middle Ages. Confidentially, so is the food. Which 
Which reminds me, we should order. Yeah, by the time it comes here, we might die of old age. <laughs> uh, does Mitzi have any plans if she does sell the rock garden? I don't know. We've never discussed it. I suppose she'll just do some hidden thunder until the play ends its run, and then she hasn't decided. Hmm. Have you decided? Oh, I don't meddle in Mitzi's affairs. I'm talking about the menu. Oh, no, of course not. The odds are too great to risk a hazardous guess. Well, I think I'll just settle on a meatloaf sandwich. I wouldn't do that, my friend. Why not? The ingredients are uh, experimental. OK. Shrimp salad. No. I'm becoming very interested as to who's going to buy this place. Yeah, so am I, but every time I bring it up, Mitzi evades the issue. Hamburger. The worst. Look, would you guys like me to get you a cup of coffee while you decide? Yeah, then, uh, maybe you should just give us a couple of seconds, okay? Great. Whoever buys this place better be on a diet. Well, the bottom line is that two days after Rhodes took those pictures of you and Walter and Matthew at Premier Photo, he left New York. Yeah, but only because he graduated from school. Well, unless maybe you can... you can provide us with another reason. Okay, I remember having the pictures taken. We were gonna send some to my folks, and there was some kind of a sale, and so we decided to take advantage of it. Do you remember Rhodes? Well, I remember the photographer was young. He had dark hair. Yeah, sure, it could have been Jeremy. Well, is there any incident that, that sticks in your mind? Something unusual? Did Rose act strangely towards you? No, no, I'm sorry. Well, I remember Matthew was real cranky and, and Walter had a cold, but that's about it. All right, so at least we have an innocent reason for Rhodes having recognized you. Yeah, nothing else. Did you get a look at the attacker? Any idea of his build? No, well, it was average. It could have been a thousand different men. Great. All right. All right, I'll keep plugging away. Okay. Chris, the whole time I've been in here, now, you've avoided my eyes. Now, is there something else? No, Derek. Oh, boy, I'm really tired. Oh, sure. Oh, I almost forgot. Forgot what? Is there any water? There's a drinking glass right here. You can wash it out. You won't catch my germs. It wasn't a glass of water I wanted. Oh, my God. The flowers. You're holding the flowers, aren't you? Yes. I had you fooled for a while there, didn't I? Yes. Miles said it was just a concussion. It is. It is. That's all it is. I'm going to be able to see any time now. Well, the fact is, uh, Miss Egan has su suffered severe concussion due to the impact of the bullet. Concussions don't always lead to blindness. Yes, I'm aware of that. Still, her brain took one hell of a beating. Now, as you know, the fluid that cushions the brain doesn't make it invincible. And the shock of the bullet has disrupted that area of the brain which controls sight. Even though the bullet just glanced off? Mm-hmm. And blindness of that type is one of the most frustrating things of all. Yes, I know. We can treat the concussion. No, there's no drug. There's no surgical procedure that'll restore the vision. And given those facts? Well, one of two things may happen. In time, either Miss Egan's brain will repair itself, or she may be permanently blinded. I'm sorry, there's just no way to tell for sure. How the hell am I gonna tell her? How do any of us tell our patients bad news? Especially when it's someone we're particularly fond of. 
Chris is making it a little tougher than usual by insisting that this is all going to go away. She thinks she's going to wake up tomorrow morning and be perfectly normal. Yes, I know she's told me that too, but there's no chance it'll happen that way. She's so damn cheerful and hopeful about it. Well, it's just whistling in the dark. She's afraid, and you can't blame her. But the cold fact is that her vision is not going to be restored overnight. It may take months, perhaps years. And even then, she may only be able to see partially. So first, she's going to have to face the fact that she's blind and then begin to take steps to find out what that means. Yes. And Miles, you can help her with that. It may be a learning process for both of you. Another thing she's going to have to cope with is the end of her career as a police detective, isn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. Look, if you want me to, I'll tell her. Oh, no, no, that's all right. Thank you. Thank you. It's something i got to do. Sure. But the sooner you do it, the better. The longer she lives with a false hope, the more difficult her rehabilitation is going to be. Rehabilitation? Yes, learning to live without sight. I wish there were more I could do to help. Let me know if there's anything I can do. Oh, with yes. But listen, thank you for coming over. Thanks for everything. Let's say I'm out, Amy. I don't want to be disturbed. Look, Cliff, do we have to go into this again? Yes, we do. You're going to go into this until your grandfather gives me a logical reason why he wouldn't tell anybody that, that there was a burial ground on the land he was leasing that the city wanted to buy way back in 1939. Well, you've got that speech down pat. It's because I've said it so often. <sighs> Look, <clears throat> Cliff, I, I do understand that it's a pivotal point in my grandfather's case, but what am I going to do? Every time I ask him about it, he refuses to discuss it. Marty, he has to discuss Marty, he has to discuss it. I know the way he gets. He digs in his heels. It would take a team of wild horses to move him. Marty, we just can't let this go. We're going to file this case. How do we know your grandfather isn't holding back on us? Of course he's holding back something Marty. on us. Marty! Marty, get back here, will you, Marty? Sorry, folks. Uh, we're lawyers. We, uh, we argue for a living. Sit down, will you? Look, Marty. We got to realize that anything we don't know will make us very vulnerable in court. I do realize that. But I don't know what to do about it. Mm. <laughs> you know, of course, that Shelley Franklin is absolutely furious with that PR campaign you planned for her. Yes, I believe she indicated her displeasure when I talked to her yesterday. Displeasure? She's fighting mad. Pity. Alicia, she is the client. It is her money she's spending. Hmm. The idea is to please the client, isn't it? Only if it sells. <sighs> I remember warning you she wasn't going to like it. So you warned me. So what? Well, may I remind you that while you seem to know a great deal about running corporations and people, mm. you don't know very much about public relations. Why won't you leave it to the professionals? Darling, you are getting terribly upset over nothing. You know, there's a better way to lower your blood pressure. You could find employment elsewhere. <laughs> Don't tempt me. I wouldn't dream of it. But tell me something. Have you been sending your resume around like you were threatening to do? No. Oh. I live in the vain hope that someday you will come to your senses. Oh. Look, I know you don't love public relations. And I know you don't love me. So what's keeping you in Monticello? That I would 
would like to know. I'm good, you are here. Yeah, you radio, do you want to talk to me? Yeah, I want to go over these reports on the various Image Inc. employees. Yes, sir. I'm looking at this one on Schaefer. It only goes back five years. Well, the report starts with his employment at Image Inc. Yeah, well, I can read that. I'm sorry. I want to know what he was doing and where he was before that. Okay, I'll dig deeper. Chief, you want to tell me what it is? I mean, um, did you talk to Chris? Chris is blind. Wait a minute, the bullet was only supposed to... Yeah, I know, I know, it's what I thought. <sighs> is it, uh, permanent? She doesn't think so. She doesn't think so, but I think the only person to ask that would be Miles. Oh, Detective Egan. Well, this should cheer her up. just been to see Chris. Sit down. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you have the common decency to tell me, huh? Come on, answer my question. Because she wanted it that way. What do you mean she wanted it? That doesn't make any sense at all. She thinks that she's going to be able to see any day now. And will she? Again. You were out all morning. Personal business. What'd you come in here for? A hall pass? No. I thought you might be interested to know that I just got a call from Shelley Franklin asking if she can come by and see me. <laughs> Obviously, little Miss Franklin doesn't know where the power at Image Inc. lies. I'll bet she thinks that she can get you to try to change my mind. Would you like me to handle it? Yes, so long as you don't handle Shelley. Oh, Greg. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been doing a little homework today. Yes, this is your personnel file. Since you did not see fit to confide in me why you were so nervous that the police might be checking into your background, I decided to look into the matter myself. I'm sure that you remember uh, your predecessor hired you, so I didn't even think to check your records. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't either. Would you come to the point? I'm very busy. I've just been talking to the public relations firm that you had listed here as your previous employer on your resume. Something rather odd. They don't seem to have ever heard of you. I tell you is that Dr. Rollins is one of the best men in this field. Dr. Ferris and I both concur with his diagnosis. I wish, I wish that we did not, but the chance of Chris regaining her eyesight is very slim. Certainly not in the near future, if at all. Does Chris know that? No, not yet. I'm just on my way to the hospital now. All right, I'm going over there with you then. After you talk to her, I'm going to see her.
Mr. Barrett, you're wanted on the phone. Thanks. Barrett. What? 